lovelies hello family this is Kimberly purpose and welcome to my channel today I wanted to do a video about another tribe called the Chickasaw tribe in Alabama um, I came across this particular art um, this particular encyclopedia um, I like using encyc encyclopedias because um, I like to get a feel of what type of publications that our young people will be using in order to get more information about um, their indigenous heritage and roots. And um, oftentimes we find that the American Aborigines are left off of history because um, everything has been completely greywashed by Caucasians. And the only ones that are really pretty much running these tribes through the government, um, as we always said, you know, as I've been researching and learning more and more, about what took place, um, you see only Caucasians, um, primarily Caucasian men, men um, running these tribes. And so, and since it's mostly Caucasians who are in the government running these tribes, it's going, they're putting themselves um, as being indigenous um, ever since they've done the Doll, um, Dolls Commission and a lot of the other treaties that's been passed in the past to exclude um, the original people of the tribes off, um, off of these tribes, you know, it's been completely hijacked and brainwashed uh, to exclude the original people who were here, who the ones that um, the indigenous people who were captured during the slave trade. Because um, a lot of people try to erase the, a lot of, you no, know, I would say some of the, um, the literature that's been indoctrinated, not some, all, pretty much, school systems uh, throughout the media has been flooded since they own the media, um, grays. They put the false narrative down as they deem fit, and um, no one has really challenged them or really decided to um, uh, go forward in um, explaining that, you know, you're incorrect, you know. Ever since I watched Dan, Dan Calloway and all the research he has done, the extensive research I have seen that I noticed that a lot of things he's been saying is correct, that, hey, um, something ain't right here. Because when you look at the uh, writings, all the um, research that's been done through um, anthropologists and archaeologists, the scientific research, you know, the, the in the artifacts, the statues, it just doesn't add up. I go, you see these old ancient statues and artworks and paintings with these uh, indigenous people looking more like um, Australian always, um, dark skinned people with uh, froze and dark complexion. Uh, that's all you saw during that time, and they said that they were similar to the Ethiopians. And then back then, they called the you know the people of Africa Ethiopians. And so, you describe them with black skin, but then all of a sudden, now it's been completely greywashed. And all you see are these um, pale faces and half breed, and some of these mongoloid looking Indians. Um, it doesn't add up. And I'm sorry, uh, some people want to disagree with me on that, but I'm going, where did these uh, dark skinned Indians from the 15, 1600s that are mentioned in these books and uh, documents? And that's been thoroughly the people who lived during that time period are describing them looking more um, like the African Americans of the day, more so than these Mongoloids and Hapreeds. And, these $5 Indians that they keep on trying to assist are the 100% uh, true Indians, which they're not um, in the Southeast woodlands. It's primarily, you know, we were here too. And the fact that they, uh, and, and they refused to explain who the paleo, I said paleo instead of paleo because um, paleo, paleo Indians, you know, I explained that in another video about how they tried to speak paling on the skin of the indigenous people through words. But um, y'all might want to check that out. But let's continue here on this particular 
video, you know, you know, I can go on and on. But it says here, uh, Chickasaw in Alabama. This particular article was written by Greg O'Brien at the University of North Carolina at Greensboro. And let's see what he has to say. It says, although Chickasaw Nation was primarily located in present-day Mississippi, the actions during the late 18th century and early 19th century had a great impact on early Alabama history. The tribe successfully nego negotiated complicated trade and military alliances with the French and the British and the U.S. government following the American Re Revolution, despite the efforts to adapt to the increasing numbers of gray settlers after the war, they were eventually forced to cede their territory, along with the Creeks, Choctaw, and Cherokees, and removed to present-day Oklahoma. Today, the member of the Chickasaw Nation reside largely, largely in 13 counties in South Central Oklahoma. And these people we know that are in there are not the um, originals. Because if you look at this artwork right here, that that this particular Indian look like they have dark skin, darker complexion Indian with braids, look like little plaques in his head, you know. Uh, yeah, you see artwork like these. And this is a sketching from 1775. Like I said, you go further back, 1500s, 1600s, and you look at some of these statues, and, you know, you'll see the difference. And I like to do a comparison. Let's, let's put American Aborigines up. I'm going to bring y'all along with me. Let's see, American. Aborigines. Let's look at this. Okay. Well, I'm talking about some of these uh, artworks that are coming up from these ancient books from the 1500s. Okay. These, this is what they saw. These dark skinned looking people right here. Okay. They look more like African Americans. I will pull up more pictures. See the dark complexion. They are not these pale looking Indians that they're putting, trying to make the ancient worse. Look at this. This is what the um, Columbus and them and all these um, people that came over into the Americas originally saw. This is what they saw. Okay. What happened to these people? That's what I'm saying. What happened to them? Okay, then they mentioned in the history books that they had um, pretty much enslaved a lot of the Native American Indians and they enslaved these dark complexion people. And I believe a lot of the Mongols came down from up north from somewhere else and took over our identity because they had some sort of agreement between the Europeans or something to fight us for land and everything. Um, that's my take on it. I, that's what I think happened. I wouldn't be surprised because a lot of them are closed lip about what happened during that time period and trying to support great supremacy by hiding the fact that we were here in the first place. Okay, and who are the Indians that they captured and put into slavery? They're us. You didn't see Mongoloids. Uh, if that was the case, if Mongoloids were the ones that were captured um, for slavery, then you would see them as being uh, the ones that were slaves and people portraying them throughout the history book as being a slave. But you don't. You don't see them as being slaves. Okay? Because they came from up north somewhere. No, I'm thinking. Uh, I know they originate from Siberia. And they got some sort of agreement going. And came down to help, you know, the, those are the tribes that fought off the indigenous people, which is us, trying to keep our land. And we got captured and they were helping them to do so. That's a theory of mine. I would like to see what you all think because they're not telling the whole truth on here. Okay. How can you come from, let's go back over here. This, okay, this is what they saw here. When they got over here, these um, particular books were written 
prior to all these brainwashed pictures of mongoloids and half-breeds um, flooding the media. Who are they? who does who are these people? Where are they? Okay, this predates all the stuff that you all are trying to fool us with. Okay. And that's just common sense and logic. Who are these people here? Okay. Who are they? And if you were to classify these people, they would classify them as being black. And that's exactly what they did. Here's another one. These are all ancient pictures that predates the Mongoloid Indians. Okay. That predates them. All the Mongoloid Indians you see, like this picture here, are during the 17, 18, probably 1800s. I, uh, I guess this is a picture. I'm not sure this one of them, but let's go back over to this picture here. Now, who are these people here? There are people, and they look just more like us than they do these mongoloids that's walking around here claiming to be indigenous and these half-breeds that they have up here representing us. This is an American picture. They try to say it's African, but this is from 1790. Okay, what happened to her? Okay, they more than likely enslaved and captured them, you know, and reclassified them later on. That's all they did. They didn't bring as many, it's already been proven they didn't have that many, you know, people that they had brought over from Africa. And it would just make more logical sense to capture the indigenous people as opposed to bringing people uh, 18 million. You got to be kidding me. You, uh, they didn't have the technology to bring that many people over. So that's why I do these videos to explain the logic and the common sense. We already know what you did. Okay. And yeah, this is the probably more accurate picture of what the indigenous people look like with dark skin, with braids, uh, coarse braided hair. Okay. And the mongoloids and these fair skinned half breed Indians, they don't have no reason to braid up their hair because they produce their own oils. And the binding, I've been researching that. You know, a lot of, uh, we have to wear protective spot styles for our hair and it make more sense for it to be us more so than what they have in there, the five dollar Indians. You know? They don't have no Caucasian don't have no reason to have their hair braided because they they can produce their own moisture. I did another video on that too. Uh about you know comparing um uh, some of the Afri African no, but that's a long another video. But y'all can check out that video. I did. I, I didn't think trying to doing some doing some comparison uh, about hairstyles. You know, I might do another one and span upon that as well. But let's. I'm getting off topic. Let's get back on topic. But I just wanted to compare the pictures between um, the Chickasaw. You know, the ancient pictures of some of the Indians, the Aboriginals that predates the flooding of the media and books with these false narratives you know we're not gonna look at what you want us to believe uh, we want it prior to the treaties we're looking at stuff that you've done prior to the treaties you know who are these indians with the afros and the thick and the dark skin where did they go they didn't just disappear but let's continue it says chickasaw life ways the chickasaw indians traditionally live in what is now northwestern Alabama, northern Mississippi, and southwestern Tennessee. Their population fluctuated between 2,000 and 5,000 throughout the 18th century, and their villages was concentrated in the area of present-day Tupelo, uh, Tupelo, Mississippi, through smaller in num those smaller in numbers than other neighbors, neighboring Indian tribes such as Creeks and Chautau. The Chickasaw impact on Alabama and the Southeast was significant. Yes, it was. I heard, you know, I've been reading about the Chickasaw. It's one of the federally recognized tribes. And it's a lot, I be, I'm believing that a lot of the federally recognized tribes, um, the five that in primarily were the American Aborigines, and it was stolen. And the identity of the original people were totally taken out of history book and replaced by a watered down version. 
that's exactly what took place because the government took over and they wanted to keep this image. And also they wanted to, uh, the U.S., the corporation wanted to make sure they have their descendants be the image of being indigenous. And so that's why they did what they did because they don't want the original people to have their land back. And they, you know, they know that they owe the American Aborigines billions, trillions, I would say, for free labor, which they had done in the past and still now, and the stolen lands and the identity theft that they hijacked for themselves um, and agreements that they have um, among themselves and possibly the Mongolo Indians as well to uh, help identify, you know, steal our identity as well. You know, just something to think about. I don't know what happened, but uh, something ain't right. You know, you go from, let's see here. Let's see right here. Let's see what these pictures are. Okay. You go from here, claiming these are what they saw when they got here. Okay. And a lot of these pictures were not the original pictures. But, and, okay, it just doesn't make sense to me. Okay, then you go over here. Okay, this is what they have here. Okay, the logo is more of an accurate depiction of what the Indians look like. Okay, this is what the Indians are supposed to be, this color. But I'm seeing this. These people are lighter than this logo. Okay, this is more of a color of an uh, of an African American with dark skin, with brown skin, I meant to say. But you don't never see that in this tribe. Look like a uh, Afro too. <laughs> they might change the logo because I pointed that out. <laughs> Let me be quiet. Okay, you get this. This is the uh, leader. Uh, you know, he looks like he's mixed. He might be mongoloid. Like I said, either mixed or mongoloid. You know, I don't know. But and then you get over here. This is what they say they saw when they got over here. Where is that picture? You look at the original bulls that they saw in the southeast, you know, in the northern tribes. And on the east, all the tribes on the east. Okay, these pictures are really old, and this is what they see. Okay, but yet you got this pale down version, looking like this. And let me see. This is probably when they were um, taking the lighter skin and the half breeds letting them be in charge and then and then who is this a chick uh is a homes cover help with the okay, i move myself out the way it's two of me nation of indian territory see i gotta read this this is um wikipedia Let's see, let me see if I can. Well, that's another picture. You know, I'm, I'm, I'm looking at one. Of course, and this is the map right here of some of the territories. This Chickasaw. And then they go Cherokee up here. So, yeah. And this is the end when they were starting to remove the Indians and sending them back to Oklahoma. You know, but yeah. But let's get back on topic. I, I like showing pictures too, so y'all can see what I'm talking about and have an idea of what we see, you know. And see these artworks, you gotta look at the dates of the artwork. A lot of the artworks that were produced um, were during the 17, you know, probably 1800, I would say 1800s, mostly, 18 and early 1900s when they was trying to keep, right after they acquired the land, that's when they start flooding and creating books with these watered down version. Um, then Callaway did a video about how they um, had coins. It was supposed to be some coins 
produced that had the images of the original indigenous people. And instead, one of the um, politicians, or I believe it was a great politician back in his uh, late 17 and early 1800s, who took his daughter, who's a European, who's not indigenous here, and put her face on it and acting like an dressing like an Indian. Uh, and then from here on, they tried to keep that image of indeed, you know, making indigenous people look more European when they weren't even over here. That's the problem we have. And, um, and totally erasure of the original people that were already over here. But it says here the Chickasaw was culturally related to their southern neighbors, the Choctaws. They spoke a dialect of Western Muscogean language. Family shared by many of the Southeastern Native American societies. Like all Southeastern wood Indians, the Chickasaw trace lineage according to the matrilineal rules of kinship, which meant an individual is only related to his or her mother's side, and the primary father figure of the child's life was likely a maternal uncle rather than a biological father. And see, I find that interesting. They couldn't be European. Caucasians base everything on matrilineal, patrilineal, which is male. This is maternal. And uh, that's definitely black, uh, American Aborigine did that. I'm going to see. I'm not sure about Mongoloids. I'm going to have to do some research. It'll be interesting to see if they do it maternal or patrilineal. But I know it's not, it's not uh, uncommon in African culture to do that, uh, to have uh, the maternal side uh, lineage um, in certain parts. But you don't you normally see that in European society. That's why you know that they are not Caucasian, which they still try to show these watered down images and having them in leadership roles. You know, you're not indigenous. It's patrilineal. That's why they got the idea of having last names going on from the father's side as opposed to the mother's side. That's just something that was uh, started with Europeans. And so, but it says by the 18th century, the Chickasaw lived in approximately 10 towns in northern Mississippi and other locations among the upper creeks from 1722 to 1740 and further east along the Savannah River from 1723 until around 1776 following the Natchez War uh, against the French in 1729. A contingent of Natchez people joined the Choctaws uh, well, no, I'm, I'm sorry, joined the Chickasaws, <laughs> sorry about that, at separate village. Uh, it says even each village maintained its own set of war chiefs, uh, civil chiefs, and other officers that may have been determined by the clan membership with 15 distinct clans. The Chickasaw village fell into one of two basic groupings, or and Mort called the Spanish clan or Panther clan, and each division maintained its own ritual, ritualistic leadership and governance. Okay, this is interesting. They, I guess they're showing you, um, it says uh, culturally related to their southern neighbors and the cha-cha. So it looked like they, uh, so like a, a some sort of uh, relationship or um Maybe kinship among these tribes, which I find very interesting. And I like how they uh, mentioned the language, the Muscovian language. I need to research that and learn more about that. You see, these are some of the things we should be teaching our kids. Our kids need to learn this as well. Uh, unfortunately, they get to watch the history to make it seem like it's not theirs, but it has been passed down along our ancestral tree that we have some lineage to these indigenous tribes as well. A lot of lineage. I say most of us do. It's just that we have been denied because they want to keep this great narrative of us being only slaves. And it's already been documented that most of the slaves were indigenous people. That's all they did. You know, if you got to think of it. If the Europeans were too lazy to pick their own cotton, to pick their own fruits and vegetables or to harvest their own stuff, you know, what makes you think that they would go and bring the 18 million people over? Okay, they're going to do the laziest thing possible, is which grab the indigenous people. And plus, the indigenous people know the land and know how to harvest the food. And it just makes more sense to uh, capture indigenous people as opposed to going all the way across the Atlantic Ocean, dragging Africans over. 
which just doesn't make sense because I have heard from so many Africans that they never heard of the transatlantic slave trade. This is something that, that the United States came up with and flooded the media with and want everybody to believe, which we can't believe anything that they say because everything has been so brainwashed and construed and everything. And um, I think some of these numbers over here, because they mentioned the number of people Back then, you couldn't travel. You know, they didn't have cars to travel all over the place and get to places quickly. So I doubt it. You know, most of the time you had to walk on foot and by horse. And so, and some of these terrains were probably rough terrains back then because they didn't have everything plowed and mowed down and cut down all the trees. There's more trees back then. Probably a lot of prettier and more fresher than it is today. Because um, grades came over here and chopped down everything. But um, when, you know, when the Indians were here, it was taken care of, it was beautiful. You know, and the American Aborigines was hand managing the land. And so um, you're not going to be able to get an accurate count of how many people are actually here. So they don't know either. I think it's rough estimates or just estimates that came out of the top of their head that they think were here. That's why we need to be challenging them on everything, you know, because you can manipulate numbers. You can lie with numbers. Don Calloway mentioned in his video. I like mentioning him because he really got some um, really interesting points. It made me wonder, too, about these population size. And then you compare it with what they have in the census and everything. You start seeing there's some huge discrepancies. And a lot of the things that are the, these... Um, like I said, the census is based on some of the numbers of the past. And if you are mislabeled and miscategorized people according to their racial ethnicity, you know, you're completely wrong. If it's based on the 1700s and you can continue to label people as being black because you don't, you don't want them to have access to their land. You want to hoard the resources. Um, you know, and, and they were originally Indians here. They were here. And then if you look at the dates and some of the names of the people that are on these census, and you got them as black, where did they come from? And you didn't bother to ask where they come from. You just put down black because you don't want them to have access to the land. That's all they did. And then um, you don't have accurate numbers because you don't have cars to go around and actually see. You know, you just doing rough estimates. Nobody's going to travel thousands upon thousands of miles to try to figure out how you doing. How did you communicate all of this? You know, I know you had, you know, did, did, did the mailing system come into place at, during the 1700s? See, these are things we need to be thinking about and challenging them on. OK, um, and and where are all these boats with engines that you brought these 18 million um, Africans in? Because they, they don't exist. <laughs> they don't exist. That's what I'm saying. Don't it doesn't exist. Because there was no engines back then. So if it was no engines, no huge ships to bring over um uh, millions of people like you claim you did, then we're you know, it just we, we see the BS. Because the story it just doesn't make black. No, there were Aborigines here already. There were people of color already here. They were black. Well, they claim to be black and here people with afros. We're here. So, you know, it just doesn't make sense. But here, this is the European explorers. Let's get to this part. You know, I'm going on and on. It says contact with European explorers. The Chickasaw's first interaction with Europeans occurred during the winter of 1540 through 1541. OK, when they repeatedly attacked Spanish explorers, Hernando de Soto. And if I'm not mistaken, <laughs> Hernando de Soto, I'm thinking, don't take my word for it, I'm going to have to research him. I've been, I think I read some, some of his readings before. He was the one that said, he was the explorer that meant that the people that they saw during that time period, 1540 to 41, <laughs> they had Afros and dark skin. Okay, not much different from the Ethiopians. Okay, I believe that's him who said that. Okay, that tells you right there what the Indians were. They were not these um, mongoloids and these happies that they are portraying and these um, gray settlers that they have in there. Okay, 
they're not. I said they pretty much hijacked our identity. And then what they were doing is they probably let um, met up with some of the Mongoloids and said, hey, let's attack these tribes so we can steal their land. And that's exactly what happened. That's what I think happened. I don't know, you know, but I think I really do believe the Caucasians got some sort of agreement with the Mongoloids or something. And then they turned on the Mongoloids too and started killing them as well. You know, but it, it's a hot mess. It's, it's just it, all of history is not being recorded. And I think part of the reason why it's not being recorded is because it's the only person that wrote the, in the history books were Caucasians. So when you don't have a holistic view of what took place as a whole, and it's heavily one side, everything is going to be based on what Caucasians say. And if it's based solely on that, it's heavily flawed. You don't have the writings of the indigenous people at all. And that's the missing part. What did the American Aborigines have to say? Okay, the ones with the Afros that y'all now claim is black, which, which really are the Indians, the Paleo Indians. And then also the Mongoloids, what they had to say. Okay, you don't hardly see any books on what they have to say because everything is so flawed and so heavily Europeanized. And they, and when you read about, they had their own languages, and some of them even had their own written language. What happened to these written languages? Okay, we already know that the Aborigines they weren't allowed to use their language because they were captured as slaves at gunpoint. You know, literally, that's what took place. And I know the Mongols still have their writings, but it's just, it's really sad. And then, but they flood, flood the media with only one angle and one perspective. That's all you're going to see. But anyway, I believe the Soto is the one that said, admitted with his own pop. Uh, that's evident right there. I'm going, he lived during that time period. He actually saw the Indians with his own eyeballs. Okay. He wrote down in his journal and it's been published all over the world that he saw black Indians that looked like the not much different from the Ethiopians, the Ethiopian, and they called all of Africa, Ethiopia back then during that time period. Okay. Africa wasn't called Africa. It's called Ethiopia. And if it was called Ethiopia and you had nothing but dark skin, black people with Afros all throughout the whole continent. Okay. He said they had dark skin and black describing them okay and so then not much different from the ethiopian so they are describing the indians and so those are the people that they saw and he said it's, it's and then all the statues and everything they have in the pictures are showing that okay hernandez de soto and then you have this artist over here let me go oh, y'all over here uh where's that book i wanted to show you Okay, these earlier drawings in the 15 and 1600s, evidence right here, what they saw. Dark skin and light skin, which is us, because we come in different spectrums, you know, because I'm considered light brown, you know, and, and it, you know, we come in different colors. But who are these people right here? And then you see one with like an afro back here. I got to look closer. Uh, some sort of coarse woven hair. Okay, this is what they saw. And he, this is part of evidence. This is what you have to go by. And they're not going by this. They just coming up with their own narrative because, you know, uh, based on 17, 1800 evidence, you can't go by that. You got to go by, you can go even further back and see this is what they saw. Okay. And then even um, De Soto in some of his writings, he described them with that. And the paintings and the pictures and the statues are also supporting what he says. Then they jump from being accurate to all of a sudden when they took over and they want to steal the resource, they, that's when they start graywashing and putting whatever they want to put. And in his expedition until then moved across the Mississippi River, culminating in a major engagement in March 4th, 1541, when the Chisasaws nearly overran Soto's force 
and killed 12 Spaniards, 56 horses, and hundreds of pigs. The, those brief encounters were only significant contact by the Chickasaw had the Europeans until the founding of Charlestown, Charleston in Carolina in the English in 1670. And then it says here, um, see, they had to wait 100 years, over 100 years, and see, to get some backup. That's what that was. And see, the Indians were killing them. They were fighting them and keeping them off the land for a very long time. You know, see, you see that? They weren't able to conquer these land until the 1780s. You know, and that's what they don't want you to know is the Indians were kicking their asses. Okay, they were kick. I'm sorry, I didn't mean to cuss. They were kicking their butts. <laughs> sorry about that. And it says the British trade sold the trade gun material, metal goods, manufactured clothes, and other items with the chicken sauce for deer skin and Indian captors who then sold as slaves. Okay, look at that. And that's what we got to remember. The slaves were not these Africans. They claimed they saw they were indigenous people. Okay, let's read this again. British traders sought to trade gunpowder goods, manufactured clothes, and other items with the Chickasaws for their skins and Indian captives, who were then sold as slaves to sugar plantations in the Caribbean. Okay? And then they brought them back into the United States and reclassified them as being black. It makes sense. Caribbean's right up there next door to the America. You know, it's right up there on the mainland. So all they did was put capture them, send them to the Caribbean. I guess they broke them in and tried to torture them, a prison camp pretty much, and then brought them back and reclassified them as being black. Now, that's what they did. That's a lazy man way of doing things because they didn't bring nobody from Africa. It makes more sense to bring them back from the Caribbean. And that's all they did. If they brought them to the Caribbean, they might not even done that. <laughs> you know, because they didn't keep real good, thorough, um, accurate records of what took place because they didn't, they knew what they were doing wrong and evil. So, and, it, and maybe whatever they did in British, they probably told them to do certain things. But then when they came here, they came up with their own rules. And then you got to also remember, Europeans sent a lot of their prisoners over here. The outcasts, the people they, they felt deemed unfit to be in society over there in Europe. They sent over here. So it's a lot of great, um, uh, a lot of great prisoners that were brought over here. So you had, you're dealing with some evil people. New criminal minds up to mischief. And then they didn't have no rules here. So they came up with rules along the way. So of course they did what they wanted to do. You know, and you can see it in the writings. And of course they try to gray wash and make it look like it's pure. That's why we should not say call it white. White means that you go unscathed with being uh you be clear of judgment. Cause you claiming them as being pure and godlike. That's why I call them gray and gray it. So it brings more exposure to who they are, the viruses and the things that they has tainted this land with. I know the truth. But it says here, the Chickasaw became permanent. Here it is right here. The Chickasaw became permanent slave traders in earlier colonial South in the sense of their Indian neighbors. Okay. So what they were doing with capturing Indians and putting them into slavery, they, 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 that's all they were doing. And see, they don't mention this a lot in the classroom. They don't want to admit that. So the Indians were the slaves. And if the Indians were the slaves, then the African-Americans are the Indians. Okay, I'm sorry. And you don't hear about the Mongols. If this is the case, then you see Mongols being slaves all the time in all the history books. You'll see their faces and everything. And sometimes and I'm starting to believe that they weren't even over here. I think they came down from north and probably had got the extra backup. Back you no, know, had an agreement to cover up the truth of what actually took place. Or as a way to make sure that they can uh, sneak grays in and, and then make it a hundred years, 200 years, make it look like their asses were here the whole time. Their butts were here when they weren't. 
when they weren't. So, and it says here, um, the Chickasaw, excuse me, y'all. The Chickasaw became permanent slave traders in the early colonial South in the expense of the Indian neighbors, enhancing their wealth and political position as middlemen between the British and other tribes. French explorers and traders who established a presence on the Gulf Coast chose to trade with their principal Indian allies, the Choctaws, to the dismay of Chickasaws, partly by this reason. Around 200 Chickasaws, led by Chief Squirrel King, located far. <laughs> Chief Squirrel King. That sounds like something an Aboriginal would come up with. <laughs> when you think about the rappers and names they come up with, you know, that's where it comes from, the indigenous, you know, the indigenous roots. They're coming up with the different names. Chief Squirrel King. Um kingpin red kingpin i think that's a rapper called red king red kingpin back in the 90s but anyway <laughs> that's what it reminds me of red kingpin chief king and chief squirrel king and you know you think about that you know so it's so much resemblance and 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 these nicknames and stuff and uh it's still passed on down it's in our genetics but anyway, it says re relocated further east to the Savannah River in the 1720s to be nearer the English and their trade goods. You see? And they were doing this so they can expand their territory, but they were hurting themselves by capturing other Indians. And then that's something that we need to learn that um, we can't repeat history. And it's sort of hard to um, understand what took place when everything has been completely graywashed. That's why it's important that we try to piecemeal all these pieces together because the answer to the question is there. They just told you who the slaves were. It's right here. Right here. Okay. And they, they were the um, indigenous people here. And that's all they did. And they didn't bring over nearly as many slaves that they claim they did from Africa. Because how come you hear about Africans as, and they actually surprised? They tell the one Africans I know, they seem surprised about this history. They say I never heard of of of, of about the slave trade, the Atlanta slave trade. And that's why I'm starting to wonder if this is just a United States thing to hide the indigenous people to marginalize even further. You know, but. Yeah, I'm going to stop here. This video is getting longer, but I'm going to put a link to this page. I might do a part two to it because this is very fascinating and interesting information. I had another article I wanted to share with you all um, because they were doing, um, explain more of the modern day treaties and stuff that they're doing now in uh, um, the federally recognized tribes and what's taking place with the Chickasaws today. But I just want to touch on the Chickasaws because I know it's one tribe that I never uh, got a chance to talk about and discuss. And I would like to see what you all think. Um, I want to know if there's an American Aboriginal Ch Chickasaw tribe that's outside the federal recognized because we all know that the federal recognized um, tribes are fakes. They're imposters of their real and true indigenous people, the ones who were captured as slaves. Um, I would like for you all to see, you know, put your comments below if you are attached to a particular tribe or affiliated with a tribe or connected, you know, with a tribe that's um, not federally recognized that are made of mostly the American Aborigines like myself. Um, I've been looking at a few tribes here um, in Georgia, but I would love to you know, know more about other tribes and um also mention what tribes you're from. If you check us out, you know, please put that below, you know, and then and you're Aboriginal. Um of uh, that's been one of the Aboriginals who've been misclassified as African American who are actually indigenous. Um, please leave your comments below. I'd like to hear from you guys. Um and you know, what do you think about this particular article? And and everything. Um, but I'm going to 
with this going to be the conclusion. Um, please check out my Purpose Counseling and Wellness Center. Is uh, I got a website for my Counseling Wellness Center, and I also have the uh, of the Institute of School. Um, I just started. I got my first class up. I'm putting up more. I'm working on it. <laughs> I keep you guys posted. Um, I'm still working on my store. It has uh, slow progress, but I'm working on it. Um, and it's going to take me a minute with that. And I'm also uh, in the process of having uh, doing online counseling as well. And um, I'll have my um, center online soon and running. I'll be able to take uh, clients as well because I'm a... Um, you know, I'm still working on some things and pieces together. I keep you guys posted. And... Um, yeah, please like this video, thumbs up, and don't forget to subscribe to my channel. Um, I also have two more channels. One channel, I have a backup channel. I still haven't really put up a lot of stuff on it, but I'm working on it and put some more videos up. But please sign, uh, sign up for it. Um, it's the Purpose Channel. And I also have a channel called Psychology Essence. Um, that one's coming along. Um, and I need to put more videos on both of them. I haven't had time, but I'm gonna put some videos up. So if y'all could click on the link and subscribe to those channels, those two backup channels, I will greatly appreciate it. But, um, till next time, peace, family, love, and peace. Bye bye.